Tonight, as we celebrate our distinguished alumni, we recognize the boundless spirit that unites us as Tritons. We honor three individuals who defied the limits of their professions, who turned their passions into their life's work, who heard the call to do what had never been done and answered. Our honorees were taught differently and they act differently. They saw through the unique lens of UC San Diego that their world was theirs to shape. Cindy Martin had been a school teacher for seven years when she enrolled in graduate school at UC San Diego. I wanted to be a researcher. I was a classroom teacher. I had taught second grade. I felt that I had discovered solutions as a teacher. The research protocols that I went through asked the simple question, how do we create the conditions every day for every student to become actively literate, contributing, participating members of society who make a positive difference in the world? Cindy learned those conditions and applied them successfully to her own classroom. But for someone of her talent and ambition, this was not enough. She saw that greater challenges lie elsewhere and rose to meet them. As a teacher who had worked in private school, who had worked in Poway Unified School District, I saw inequities. I saw how some students got a different education. And I began to think about why is it that there seems to be an inequitable learning experience right here in our own city? And couldn't there be the exact same offerings in terms of a public education system right in the inner city, which is what brought me to San Diego Unified School District. Cindy brought her education and experience to Central Elementary in San Diego's City Heights, where she herself had grown up. 100% of the students live below the poverty line at that school. 85% were English learners. Every single risk factor known to public education existed on that campus. There were major barriers of achievement when students come from struggle, they come from poverty, they come from lack of parent education levels, maybe parent involvement is compromised because of family living conditions. Can't those children achieve too? Cindy created initiatives to make sure the children who needed it most could rise to their potential. The results followed, test scores improved, staff morale soared, and the learning environment became one of support and nurturing. The Board of Education took notice and unanimously chose her as superintendent of the district. My goal is to serve in public education and I started as a teacher and I consider myself a teacher first and foremost, but as the superintendent of the second largest district in the state and the eighth largest in the nation, I have a tremendous responsibility and my responsibility is to our community and to our students because I believe in all my heart and soul in the hope and promise of public education in America. Cindy Martin is making good on that promise to both the children of San Diego and the future of our community. I love my job every single day. For me, it's not a job, it's my life's work. And I happen to have this job title of superintendent, that is my job title, but my life's work is to teach and to create systems that transform lives. And so I see that as boundless, I see public education as boundless. It is up to us to create conditions that break the boundaries for our students. Throughout his career as a global finance innovator, Ken Croner has been an academic at heart. His economics training at UC San Diego grounded him in the scientific method, itself an asset in his financial career. In finance, the, the markets are really volatile. It's, they're full of noise, and we're trying to, to separate the noise from the information. The only way to do that is to start with a structured framework and never deviate from that structured framework. And that's what I got at UCSD. That's what they taught me. And that's the reason we've been successful. After applying his education as a college professor, Ken joined Barclay Global Investors. After a merger with BlackRock, Ken rose to become the global head of financial asset strategies and chief investment officer of scientific active equity. But he never forgets what these titles really mean. I don't just manage money. I'm managing people's retirements. I'm making people's retirements better. I remember a conversation I had with my dad before he passed away. He was telling me about his retirement portfolio. 
and he was listing through every asset, every investment he had in his retirement fund. And then he got to the last one, he said, but the best fund I've got, the best fund I've ever invested in is this thing called the AGF 2020 fund. And I just about dropped on the floor. I said, Dad, that's my fund. That's what I do for a living. I manage that fund. And what I learned then is that what I do for a living is I make people's retirements better. I'm not making people wealthier. I'm giving them a happier retirement. And that's worth going to work for. Avid philanthropist and volunteer, Ken uses his time, talent, and treasure to guide and strengthen UC San Diego through his service on the Foundation Board of Trustees. So what drives my involvement with UCSD is simply making a difference. UCSD is making a difference all around the world, and if I can even have a small, tiny part of what UCSD is doing to impact the environment in London or the economy in Africa, then I want to be a part of it. Along with his wife, Jennifer, Ken was instrumental in establishing endowed chairs for his former advisors, Robert Engel and Clive Granger. They needed the resources for funding the chair. And Jennifer and I talked and we recognized that we wouldn't be where we were if it wasn't for Rob and if it wasn't for Clive. A prime example of the Triton spirit, Ken believes in the impact that can be made in an industry with limitless potential. In our industry, it's boundless opportunities. Opportunities to make a difference, opportunities to grow a career, opportunities to impact the world. But it's absolutely boundless. And that's, that's one of the reasons I love my job. Mike Judge is a celebrated artist, a filmmaker, actor, and animator, who started with an unlikely education in physics. There's no tolerating any kind of bullshit in physics and science. I mean, you're, you're absolutely trying to prove something, and you it's very easy to show someone that they're wrong if they're wrong. I think that kind of, can, it's, it's helped me in arguments with executives, I think. After putting his science degree to work in various roles, Mike let his creativity take the lead. A self-taught cartoonist, he made short films and sent them to major networks, which led to his big break with MTV and later Fox and HBO. Like for a long time, I thought you had to know somebody to get into the entertainment business. And maybe that's true, but I didn't know anybody. So I thought there was this big hurdle to overcome of like, how do I, I'm not a very sociable person. I can't go knock on doors in Hollywood and say, hey, I'm funny, look at me. So it took me a while to realize I should just go do something and not worry about any of that. With feature films like Extract, Idiocracy, and the contemporary classic Office Space, Mike is as known for his contributions to pop culture as the piercing wit he poses to the world. For me, it's been kind of fun to uh, see something out in the world that bothers me and make fun of it and have it be funny and get over with an audience. That's been like a really satisfying thing. For example, I think um, TGI Fridays used to have these suspenders that had all these buttons on them, pieces of flair, and the employees, that's what they were actually called. The employees were required to wear 15 of them. Most of them had more. I found this out, put it in a movie, movie called Office Space. It then kind of became a cult hit, and from what I hear, TGI Fridays denies it, but uh, <laughs> they eventually got rid of the pieces of flair because people kept <laughs> making comments to all the wait staff about their pieces of flair. And uh, so I think I made a difference, made the world a better place, <laughs> got rid of all those buttons on the suspenders at TGI Fridays. <laughs> Yet even such an accomplished humorist can see the value and virtue of an institution like UC San Diego. I'm not always the most articulate person. I can seem like a dumbass sometimes, but then I can say, I have a physics degree. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a feeling of boundlessness when I was messing around with animation. The first time I got film back from a lab, I put the film in the projector and I look at it and it's like, oh my God, this actually looks like a cartoon. Uh, and I'm looking at the guy walking and I'm going, I could have him do anything. I can have him bang his head. I can have him do, oh, like, well, I can do anything now. All three of our distinguished alumni soar in their lives and careers. 
and yet return to the place where they first took flight. Even at the top of their fields, they hold dear the institution that helps them exceed expectations, go beyond boundaries, and take the Triton spirit to new heights. <laughs>